Her journey. So roll off intellect to remove the doubts about the real self one aspect and once we remove the doubt that intellect disciplines our daily life and living. How long we have to attend this session? That is another question that comes to our mind. First thing, why that question comes to the mind? Three hours, those who are attending three hours in a week, as compared to the seven days we give to delusion. Compared, yeah, many people. No, no, no. I know it. I know it. Yes, you know it, because you are in delusion. Just think, think in that way. So, first of all, yes. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for everyone who is contributing to the journey of the self discovery. <clears throat> so I asked a simple question, how long we have to attend the session? You need not to attend. Provided to you have, you think in your intellect, three hours of the wisdom as compared to the seven days we live in delusion. But if these three hours become seven days, you are done. You are there. Did you understand? Last time we covered that every day we wake up, the real self is settled in the mind. You check every day. The delusion does not touch you. Or after the session, you know, you go to the honey, you made me upset. Delusion has taken over. There's one hour is wasted. Done. Finish. And then you ask how long I have to attend. So how to know that delusion does not touch me? Mind is free from insecurity, unhappiness and dissatisfaction. There is no conflict and confusion. See, just, just you have to think. You have to think. Be very clear. At the same time, I am humbled about that you are attending the session so what we talk in the session is only about the real self, is only about peace and happiness. And when we don't have a time even for three hours <laughs> every week. Check every day you succeed. Every day you wake up and you think and speak and act in day-to-day -day life with the real self. You need not to worry about awakening. Forget about it. In every situation, with every relationship, internally you are in peace and happiness, love and wisdom. Or I can say that peace and happiness has taken, has taken over your life, your thought, your speech, your action, your relationship. Then we are there. Then we are there. 
as you know that we have been understanding what is knowledge, what is delusion, what is emotional freedom, what is the difference between the individual and, uh, and uh, the supreme consciousness and how to remove that suffering from our life. These are our topics and I pick up from the different teachings of the Master. And now you are clear that satsang we covered, I think, last time, satsang. Satsang, then uh, it leads to uh, um, dispassion. Dispassion leads to removing the delusion. The delusion, uh, when it is removed and from the mind, the mind is steady. You wake up in the morning, the mind is steady. It picks up the real self. You are going to sleep in the night, you, it picks up. Otherwise, this mind is itself a delusion. And, you know, after the session, just check the state of your mind, whether that state of the mind continues or it leaves you. That is why I told you knowledge, humility, from the humility, inner qualification, from the inner qualification, the inner wealth, from the inner wealth, the righteous life, the righteous life makes us happy all the time, all the time. So, intellect, we are going to understand this intellect today. So last time I said, do you remember 2LCRP, learning and listening, contemplation, reflection and the practice. First understanding that by listening and learning, what happens? It, it is an inquiry with discernment and dispassion. It is not an action. Repeat listening, thinking and thinking helps us to see the possibility that there is a real self beyond senses in the mind. Otherwise, your mind may say that, oh yeah, he's a beer guy, an old guy, so better to listen to him, why to react? It will not work. You have to react and you have to find out where, is there a possibility that there is a real self? For all these weeks and months and years we have been attending the session, do I get a belief inside that, yes, I have seen it? When the mind is withdrawn completely, I enter into that state of calm and the peace and the joy. It, that peace and the calm is independent of anything outside, independent of any relationship, any condition. Once the mind is settled with that possibility, you are not going to leave the session. Repeat listening helps the mind to hold the knowledge for a longer period. So when it holds the knowledge for a longer period, the result is discernment and dispassion. False eye can be removed by intellect with the knowledge. That is the whole uh, understanding of by given up uh, by our masters. Let us understand a little bit about this intellect because intellect keeps the knowledge. Intellect keeps the knowledge, isn't it? If I'm right, what is intellect in the mind? So you have to contemplate and think. When the matter meets the consciousness, the mind is created. The mind appears like consciousness, but is matter. When I say what I said, when the matter and the consciousness comes in contact, the mind is created. Now this mind sometimes uh, goes towards the matter, 
sometimes it moves towards the consciousness. When it moves towards the consciousness, it is living within, going within and awakening within. And when it is moving towards the matter, means the body, breath, mind, intellect, relationship, and everything in the world, it behaves like a matter, unconscious. There the problem comes. First thing to understand. Second thing, in our journey, the, the uh, one master clearly says the mind is structurally one. Structurally one, but has four functions. One is the thinking mind. You know, you wake up in the morning and we have a lot of thoughts. A single thought about the conflict and confuse and destroys your entire day. And we are not aware of it. So first is the mind, thinking mind. Second is the intellect. We are given an intellect. We will understand. We are given an intellect by the existence to observe, to have a choice and to control. Third, function of the mind is the memory and fourth is the ego, the I thought, I thought, I am stressed. So I thought comes from the mind. To have a clear and more deeper understanding, compare the animal mind with the human mind. Animal intellect or animal mind you can say is governed and controlled by the nature. So they do not have a thinking power because they need not to think to regulate their basic activities. They do not have an option. So they do not have a deciding power. How can you say that? How can you say that? You have a tiger in front of you. Tiger can attack you either through his jaws and paws. Anywhere in the world, anytime, in any condition. Are you clear? What options we have? I see the stick. I see the rifle. I see the pistol. I see the knife. I have all options available to save myself. Do you see that? Just one example. <laughs> oh, you insulted me. So then I thought comes, you know. I find only one option, animal option. I will also react. Just see, understanding. We need to understand only. <laughs> Do you see? In every situation, we are going deeper. So animals do not have a choice. Do not do so. There comes another uh, change in our human life as compared to the... You see that all the religions, when they talk about sins and virtues, merits and demerits, and because animals do not have a choice, they do not accumulate merit and demerit in their life. How come? Tiger kills the prey, it kills the deer. It cannot be known as uh, violence. <laughs> it cannot be known as violence. Huh? That's what we understand by the food chain. But I have a choice. I have a choice to react against you and I have a choice to continue to be in peace and calmness with you. These two choices uh, creates either merit or demerit. So you see that we are understanding the intellect. Pay attention to this. We are understanding that intellect. Human intellect has that power to make a choice. And that choice gives us the sense of freedom. Likes and dislikes, make a choice. Pain and pleasure, make a choice. Honey says something, make a choice. 
Dad says something, make a choice. Huh? Whatever. <laughs> you know, his dad is also my student, so that's what I'm saying. In a different session, in a different program. <laughs> Human intellect thinks to have a choice, to control. Now see the other part. That is, I feel that is most important thing to understand. We have the weakest body, we have the strongest intellect, we have paralyzed the intellect, that's why we are suffering. How can you say that? How can you say that we have the weakest body? Look at the COVID that you cannot see, it kills. You see? COVID. I can't see. I can only see it through the electron microscope. That has killed millions. That has killed millions. We have paralyzed our intellect. What do you mean by paralyzing the intellect? What do you mean by paralyzing the intellect? Now understand that. So live your life with the intellect means that the likes and dislikes, emotional dependence, pain and the pleasure, profit and the loss, anger and the reaction do not influence your life. Can you say that I, 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 have, a, I have a great intellect and I am angry? Can you say that? Ask yourself. Can I ask yourself? So we have paralyzed our intellect. Likes and dislikes comes from the mind. Intellect is not at all concerned about it. So now can you recognize that we have, we stop, or I would say the intellect stops functioning when, the, when we are carried away by the likes and dislikes and emotional dependence, pain and the pleasure, profit and the loss. It goes to animal mind. Behavior, attitude, impulsive, instinctive works with the likes and dislikes. And that causes the problem. Do you, do you see the paralysis? Intellect is paralyzed now. No, no, I'm not going to listen to you. Enough is enough. Animal mind says enough is enough. You are showing me the stick. Now I'm going to attack you. There is no other possibility. Now I have to compete. Look at those scientists. Did they stop thinking when they realized that there is a COVID virus? Or they continued working? Now I have heard that, you know, Britishers have created some pills. Huh? Have you read that? They have created pills for it. No? It is the intellect that is constantly working, still working. We hardly use our intellect to free our life from anxiety, anger, hesitation. So it is controlled, it is suppressed and it resurfaces again and again. I'm not saying all the masters are teaching it. Now I've attended your sessions, you know, now I know everything. This is delusion. <laughs> this is delusion. <laughs> this is delusion. Why it is delusion that I thought? Do you recognize at the subtler level? <laughs> and that I thought bounces back with the fear, with the anxiety, with the sense of insecurity again. My master said that pick up one text not one or two, 
study it again and again and see how much the intellect can reveal the knowledge differently. Because this delusion can take over human life at any time. Until that steadiness comes. So what happens? When the steady intellect comes, your mind reflects outer situation with reference to the real self. Likes and dislikes, it's okay. Pain in the other, it's okay. Pain in the blazer, it's okay. Because you do not allow the mind to get dictated and influenced by the outer situations. That is an awakened state. That is an awakened state. Do you see that? Again, remember, physically we are the weakest. Find out. Look at the elephant. <laughs> Look at the tiger. Forget about them. Look at the mosquito. Now malaria is eradicated. It is only because of the intellect. More or less, it is eradicated. Mosquito is a small creature. A snake bite can kill us. How we save ourselves? Knowledge, intellect. So if that is possible by the scientist, why it is not possible to transcend all the likes and dislikes, pain and the pleasure, duality and a conflict? Simple way. <laughs> Simple way. So that is why Master says that we are given in higher faculties with a vertical spine. It is because of the vertical spine. I'm not going there. Tiger has no choice. We have a choice because of the vertical spine. We grow upward. Tiger grows backward. All animals grow. Have you seen that? I'm not going there. It's, it's another topic. It's another topic. Do you see that? All the animals grow backward. <laughs> we grow vertically. <clears throat> Masters uses another way to explain that. Our intellect is uncultured. We have to culture this intellect. Do nothing. When you have cultured your intellect, 100%, that intellect can perceive the real self here and now, in every situation, in every relationship. And that intellect will not allow our life to be influenced and dictated by the likes and dislikes, pain and the pleasure, duality and a... They will remain there. Body is subjected to pain and pleasure. But it will not cause unwanted suffering in your life. You know, have you seen those people? A little pain in the body. They make it so big. Have you heard the word mitochondria? Oh no, hypochondria? I think Jerry knows. I forgot you. Oh, little pain. Oh, I've been suffering for the last 10 years. Unnecessary. It is suffering. Because of the lack of intellect. Because the intellect is uncultured. Intellect, I have told you, means knowledge, clarity, uh, understanding, classifying. No doubt is there. It is settled. So what is the, what that means? When that intellect is settled in the right knowledge, in the right knowledge with discernment and dispassion, it is known as faith. We don't have blind faith in this Eastern wisdom. We have only the faith, the power of faith that comes from the intellect. It means the knowledge is 100% settled. Seven days, Maya, 
except three hours we talk of the wisdom. When these three hours, the wisdom permeates all the seven days, you are there. That is an indication. That is an indication. That is an indication. So when we remove the paralysis of the intellect, the first thing what happens, the, the faith enters, real self. Second, power of the right thought expressed 24 by 7. What it means? what it means. You have created a wrong notion about anyone in your family and that image reacts. Now you have stopped reacting. Third, power of decision making, instant decision making. You return to the peace and happiness. You return to that state of calmness because mind recognizes the real self. And if the mind recognizes the likes and dislikes, the intellect is paralyzed. Think in this way. I'm just giving you my own expression. And then what happens? You start regulating your life towards the journey of the self-discovery. Are you getting it? Yes, yes. I believe so. So constantly constantly. The last point, what happens once we culture our intellect, we remove the paralysis of the intellect, what happens? Think of that. No paralysis of the intellect means the mind cannot dictate you with the emotional dependence, with the likes and dislikes, with the pain and pleasure. They will continue to exist in the world outside, but they will not exist in your mind. Are you getting it? Now, because mind has no say. Mind has no say. Why? The intellect has a right knowledge there. 100% right knowledge means the faith is there. What is that faith? Peace and happiness is, are my essential nature. We paralyze our intellect in our relationship in our physical challenges, Ashok sir, in our physical challenges, uh, with the people, in profession, it results in anxiety, sorrow, fear, suffering, insecurity. I believe you are getting it. I believe you are getting it. So then the masters have found out what they have found out that you can divide, you can classify for the sake of understanding that intellect into four different types of intellect. And if you use those four types of intellect, the life will be in that state of mindfulness 24 by 7. We'll talk about white coat hypertension next in the next session. So let us let us start our practice. Eyes are closed. Body is steady. So it is all a practice of action. So what? Yes, body is steady. Now it's not a big deal for you all to keep the body steady. Very good. Check that. Check your intellect is saying the body is steady or the mind is saying no. Why you are pushing me? I'm not. Do you see that? 
you will find out those movements, though the impulses, my friend, they are possible. But the more and more you practice, the more you more listen, the time comes. The intellect says, now I am there, when? 24 by 7. You already know that I, I convert the discussion into a practice. So you see that? So first, when the body is steady, mind is facing within, eyes are closed, and you are comfortable. And you're comfortable and carefree in that state. You are looking at your intellect. Make it, let us make it very clear. The mind with a particular thought or emotion or the past impression pushes you in one direction, but you are aware of that. You, sh you are not, you don't want to go there. That is your intellect. You know, in religion, they, they talk that it is a conscience. But I'm not going there. I'm not part of the religion. We are just discovering our real self. So we are going deeper. So now see that, does the mind allow you to be more and more comfortable and carefree now in this practice? Oh, that is a good challenge. So that is what I say, move the mind on the head, on the neck joint. Mind continues there, sensation, comfort and steadiness. Oh, yes. Intellect says, yeah, perfect. Or it says, uh, no. You will discover how long you have to practice. It's not me. Shoulder joints being there, feel, sensation, comfort and steadiness. 100% today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, for a week, for a month. And then you see the mind does not return with its reaction, with its past impression. You are there. Only one step. Yes. One step. The entire body, all the joints being there, feeling, sensation. Comfort and steadiness. You see, this is an experience. Experience is knowledge. Knowledge is awareness. Be very clear. The knowledge, the intellect must clear every aspect. The word that I use for practice. Oh, yes. And now being carefree. Can the mind recall being carefree? I have explained about in maybe in 50 different ways. Can the mind recall only one way and then it settles? I have to nothing to do with these thoughts. These thoughts are not mine. I am separate from it. Really? Are you separate? So can you not move the body for an hour? Without the mind, body cannot move. Do an experiment, even for five minutes during the day. And you will see, yes, it is possible. Now we'll go to, again, that's why I introduced, oh, we are now going to do an action with a short and gentle breathing start short, short gentle breathing from the rib case focused mind is focused deep inside the forehead in action your intellect is there that is what i wanted to educate your mind not you but your mind
So the mind, the intellect, mind remains focused inside. It is not affected even if the experience changes. Continue, short, quick, gentle breathe through both the nostrils. Expansion, contraction of the chest and see what happens. So the intellect is able to maintain its awareness that this body, breath, expansion, contraction are not me, what you achieve. Likes and beyond dislikes and likes. Continue, quick, short, gentle breathing continues and there is an awareness deeper inside that is calm. Even if the experience changes, no, 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 I feel I should not do it. I should do it. I'm excited. They all come from the mind. Can I use the word paralysis of the intellect? Yes. We're going to change slowly these practices, but we are doing the practices for deeper and clear understanding with these steps. Continue breathing, short, quick and gentle breathing. When the mind takes over the breath and it has likes and dislikes, it will say, no, how long? Why should I do it? But we are doing it to release that impact of the mind over the intellect. You will also find out this mind changes the rate and the rhythm of the breath. It plays all the tricks to stop it. But the very knowledge, the power of the intellect can bypass it. We can try this even during the day, just with the breathing. Maybe five minutes of breathing, another five minutes of stillness. And you will discover, yes, it is possible. And if it is not possible, you'll also know it. And stop this, do nothing. Just do nothing. And what is the goal? The goal is that we should experience the entire body from the top of the head to the body, sensation, relaxation and stillness. <clears throat> Uh, the fundamental uh, of breathing is understood by our masters that it purifies the mind. For a temporarily, for a temporary period, the mind is not going to create any issue. And at that moment, we start with the nyasa. You already know, start breathing deep, silent and slow, moving the mind inside the right arm in the space or a blankness, saying mentally, Om, singing mentally, Om Shanti, reaching to the fingers, and as you exhale, moving the mind from the fingers to 
the shoulder inside, not outside, singing again. Suggest so knowledge through the knowledge. I related the breathing. I related being comfortable and carefree with the mind and the paralysis of the intellect and how to remove it. Continue. Om Shanti. You can check through your intellect, yes, the body remains in the state of sensation, relaxation and stillness. The mind does not fall into unconsciousness, means neither sleep, no, nor reaction. And the mind continues to flow on the highway. Intellect is constantly working. How simple it is. But to reach to that simplicity, when we reach to that simplicity, what happens? The power of faith. I talked about it. The knowledge is a hundred percent settled. You have a different level of awareness. And I'm moving the mind inside the left arm. So what is happening if the mind continues to react? I told you, the intellect is not settled with the knowledge, so the paralysis, that is preventing you to take care of your blood pressure. I was talking to Ashok just now. So it means the mind, that is how I recognize. The mind is still in the domain of, how can I express? In the domain of likes and dislikes, pain, pleasure, profit and loss, duality, conflict and confusion. Intellect says I understand, mind says Oh, I know you understand, but Deep silence, slow breathing, I told you, is the car, mind is the driver, the space inside is the highway. What should I do with I? No, just become aware of the space. Means kind of an objectless state. And the intellect puts into that objectless state Om Shanti. Now inside the right leg, you see the mind is supporting this nyasa hundred percent. Means what? That is what I discussed. And that is what does not happen. Even in our relationship, even during our daily activities in our life, thought is somewhere, speech is somewhere, action is somewhere else, it is because of the mind.
mind is not at all. This is the meaning that we are working on the mind. The mind is not working on us. Now inside the left leg. So during the day even you pick up only one step of Nyasa and do it only in the spine. And see what happens. You can figure out what to figure out if the mind is paralyzing the intellect or if the intellect takes over the mind. You decide for doing it 10 minutes and you will can't keep sitting even for half an hour. No. Continue with the left leg. Now inside the spine, you see everything is happening inside. What a beautiful state. The outer conditions of the body, the past impressions in the mind, the duality conflict in the mind, they do not have any impact in the practice. Your mind may be holding the body. The mind is saying, you see that I'm making an effort. Oh, that too is paralysis. So gradually what happens by regular practice and understanding, we realize 
Realize the problem. Leave this practice. Go to the triangle inside the heart, facing upward. Move the mind either clockwise or anti-clockwise slowly. And then mind moving inside from the center of the triangle into the cave of the heart by singing Om. So Om is taking the mind deep inside. Then everything is standstill. Shanti. So you will find out that everything stands still and from there the revelation, the knowledge reveals. Well, if any thought comes, the mind is driven by any past impression, you return again to the triangle. Otherwise, only the triangle Moving the mind on the triangle once becomes enough. Do we need to make our mind empty? No. We realize when the mind moves inside, it merges with the real self. There is a natural state of emptiness. I believe we all got it. There is a natural state of emptiness when this mind merges with the real self. So who realizes the intellect? There is no pressure, there is no duality, there is no conf confusion. Otherwise what the mind says? Oh, this side emptiness and that side conflict. That side, duality. This side, emptiness. So that is what we have understood today clearly.
And now do nothing. You have been doing nothing. <clears throat> Separation. That I'm not the name in the form. How do you separate? The intellect knows this body is constantly changing. It has a name and it is the form by which I am recognized. And inside the knower is there. There is no doer. It means you are not doing anything. We already discussed that the mind creates the doer and the experiencer. Part of expression of I thought ego. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, the mind on the left hand, take your time, raise both your palms, place it in your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences and bring the hands down. How are you, David and Jerry? <clears throat> Um, it was a great experience for me during the um, short breaths. I had an itchy nose and I thought to myself, I'm not going to scratch it. And soon it went away. And then during the yasa, I had an itchy or something in my neck. And I thought, no, no, my mind is trying to distract me. I'm going to ignore it. By the time we got into the heart center of the triangle, I felt like I was elevated above me. And, and I was an observer of my body and my mind. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a beautiful observer. We are a knower. We are not a doer. The mind creates the doer. No doubt. That's a deeper experience. How are you, Jerry? Sorry, I'm good. Um, just want to first say thank you for being here on this platform, creating it for the last two years. So for all thank of you us. very much. For I'm grateful to yeah. you. You have been supporting me. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I guess the meditation for me started during the discussion um, around Shraddha, faith. Yeah. And, I, and I was clear that um, I'm settled in the faith. And, and over the past two years, I've really been grounded in that faith. Beautiful. Going. 
So it doesn't mean I'm not still working on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we have to work on the mind. Uh, how are you, uh, Sam and uh, Stephen? I think Jerry told you to join the session, yeah? Yeah. So you have to be grateful to Jerry and David. <laughs> oh, always am. Oh. Um, my, my meditation can be summed up as being ever present. Um, just there's never, there's not a thought, there's not a worry. I, whatever we were doing, wherever we were supposed to be within the bodies at the time, even though I know we're not our bodies, um, it, I was there, um, with, with no other distractions. Um, I have realized when we got to the heart, when we enter the heart cave, it's, there's nothing goes on in there. It's just Good. settled and quiet and peaceful and happy. And today's meditation, actually, I knew when I came out of that depth of my heart center, that, that real quietness, because it was like that point of me to check in with myself. And the contemplation reflection came in and said, okay, where are we at right now? And like, this feels really good. And, and, and that's where the whole thing just came together. And I realized to Jerry's statement is that I'm moving into the faith. Beautiful. Beautiful. Faith not on me, you're on yourself. <laughs> so, how are you? Beautiful. How are you, Sam? <laughs> Good. Um, felt uh, it was a very deep space today, uh, but just noticed. Uh, you know, a sense of, of peace and happiness while, while I was there. Beautiful. No, no thoughts, no anything, nothing to worry about. Just that. Just that, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes, Kate, how are you? Be grateful to our Lara. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, and to everybody that's here, because I wouldn't be here if you were here. So, um, right. Yeah. Uh, very quiet and still. Uh, very, very quiet and still. Beautiful. Deep and, yeah. Beautiful. Right in. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, How are you, Wave Hove? So it was really, very really good. Uh, very quiet. It's like that I'm sitting and then all the things are going in front of me and I'm just at peace. Beautiful. That's beautiful. How are you, Ashok? कुछ और करना है प्रभु जी अंदर जाना चाहिए हां जी आज तो सर अच्छा हुआ आज अच्छा इट वाज गुड एंड या इट वाज गोइंग फ्रॉम माइंड टू नो माइंड एंड या या इट शुड गो डीपर इनसाइड देन दोस चैलेंजेस विल आल्सो गो अवे हाउ आर यू एनेस्थीसिया थैंक यू फॉर द प्रैक्टिस आई एम ओके um i have i've had a lot of uh, interesting this week because i'm going deeper to my practice and outside world is uh, uh changing and i have uh, opportunity to check everything how is going for me personally like my fears came up or something else and uh, this meditation was very quiet and peaceful but i had some thoughts and body movement something yeah. like that i think it's because of all of the, this process yes yes simple understanding anesthesia yes you are getting there a simple understanding that when the mind is intellect is paralyzed then we experience then we experience the suffering in our life. So, but that intellect should realize, as Jerry said, with the faith of, to the real self. So I have a faith, yes, the real self is within me. It is here and now. So even if the mind is playing the tricks, we can get rid of it. That is all for today. 
Thank you very much. We'll meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kavita, Kavita, check out Kavita. Kavita, Kavita, yes. How are you, Samir? What is your experience? <laughs> Kate, you know, reminds me, you know, she is uh, wonderful. <laughs> Sir, it has been a long time I am doing this meditation and it has been a wonderful experience. Wonderful. I am totally, I totally forget my body. I totally forget there is, I am feeling cold, anything. When I come out of meditation, then I think that I am suffering from cold. And I am, means I totally lose my body awareness. And I am in meditation. That's beautiful. That's a kind of transcending the body. That is beautiful. Wonderful. So we'll meet again. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Are Samir usko de dena Maya kitni de niya Maya.